Daniel chapter 1. Hallelujah. And it says in verse 1, In the year, the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem and besieged it. The Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand with part of the vessels of the house of God, which he carried into the land of Shinar to the house of his God, and he brought the vessels into the treasure house of his God. And the king spake unto Ashpenaz, the master of his eunuchs, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel and of the king's seed and of the princes, children in whom was no blemish. Somebody say, there is no blemish, is no blemish. In, my in my life. Come on, prophesy. Yes. But well favored and skillful in all wisdom and cunning in knowledge and understanding science, and such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace and whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. Verse 5 says, And the king appointed them a daily provision of the king's meat, and of the wine which he drank, so nourishing them three years, that at the end thereof they might stand before the king. Now among these were of the children of Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah unto whom the princes of the eunuchs gave names. For he gave unto Daniel the name of Belteshazzar, and to Hananiah of Shadrach, and to Mishael of Meshach, and to Azariah of Abednego. And verse 8 says, But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Before you have your seat, tell your neighbor, I can handle this. I can handle this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I can handle this. God bless you. God bless you. You may have your seats. Amen. I can handle this. Yes. Hallelujah. Come on. I can handle this is the message the Lord gave me today. Amen. Out of the book of Daniel chapter 1. Come on. And one of the things that we see is Daniel was a man who was unmovable Amen. in his faith towards God. Come on. Amen. There are so many of us today who are shaken and moved by so many things. Wow. Even the smallest things that come our way moves us out of our position. It shifts our focus and we are going to see today out of Daniel's life that Daniel stood his ground instead of giving in to whatever decree a king might have made or whatever a Babylonian might try to persuade him to do. Wow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we today, as people of God, Come on. we must get to the point where we understand how to control ourselves when it comes to this world. Yes. Wow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And this is the gift, hallelujah, that God has blessed or the fruit that God has blessed the church with so that we can learn self-control, learning how to be temperate in matters concerning our spiritual walk. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Because we are in a place right now where so many distractions, hallelujah sister Miller, is taking people out of the church on a daily basis. Wow. I am talking about people who are walking out of the door on a Sunday morning and before the week is ended they are out the church. No ground to stand on because their faith is in the wrong place. Right. Come on. Their belief in God is not where it's supposed to be. They're easily shaken and moved by situations, Sister Abigail, and hallelujah, their minds have not been made up yet wow. to serve the true and living God. So the church has to do something. Come on. Who is the church? The church is a body of believers. The people of God who have accepted Jesus Christ into their life. 
and they have realized that without him they cannot make it so even if they walked out of the doors today hallelujah and trials come their way they will not forsake their god they will not forsake hallelujah their belief and foundation in who jesus christ is in their life because i remember when i was sick when the doctors could not do anything for me, he healed me. When I needed peace, hallelujah, and there was no one to turn to, I turned to him in prayer, and he brought peace into my life. Because I know him to be the God that is exalted above all things, hallelujah, pertains to my life. Without him, I cannot make it. Without him, I cannot do anything. Without God in my life, I cannot change. So I need, hallelujah, God to always be there. Come on. Oh my God, I need you. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, I can handle this. I can this. handle this. Come on, come on. Daniel understood that he was in a place of bondage, but not bondage to his spiritual walk. What? Even though they were in captivity in Babylon, the Babylonian captivity did not keep him captive from what he believed in. He was a man who understood the heart of God. He understood the process of serving God in spite of the situation. Hallelujah. We have people today living in bondage to society. Yeah. Living in bondage to the internet. Yes. Yes. Living in bondage to Facebook and Twitter. Yes. It is captivity because the time that you spend just losing around over there in the internet trying to watch and examine everybody's life. Yeah. You could spend time with God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And something that's meaningful to your progress. Yes. Tell your neighbor that I, I need some progress in my life. I need some progress. Tell him, ease off the Facebook. Ease off the, ease off the Twitter. Ease off. ease off the social media websites. Just ease off a bit a bit. Tell him, put that cell phone down for a moment. So much business. To, hey, glory to God. Ease off. Yes. We are in a society. Where we are bound to the things that we have connected to our hips and our pocketbooks. Hey. My, my, my. Come on. Mm. God. Telephone, iPad, hey. yes, yes. computer on the desk. My. Hallelujah. Computer help. in the, <laughs> the bathroom, computer all over the place. Amen. Pastor. <laughs> Can I touch on that just a minute? Yes, yes. That stuff has us in bondage. Why? Amen. Because technology is determining our activity and our effectiveness to survive now. Wow. What will you do when they strip you Amen. of technology? Amen. How many people know how to operate their business without a computer? Amen. How to just open a book and write down your sales for that particular day? Or how you can progress in life with a book instead of knowing how to go on the internet? See, we have been what? Changed whether you know it or not, into a form of bondage. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Now we have been held captive. Yeah. Guess what it's setting you up for? Uh, come on. It's setting you up, hallelujah, to complete reliance on something that will control your life if you let it My. in your future. Come on. Somebody say amen. amen. Can I handle this? I Ask your neighbor, hallelujah, can you handle this? Well, Daniel, in his life, Come on. he saw bondage. This was a young man, a teenager, a teenager like some of you who were in here. This was a young man, and he had three friends, his three friends, Shadrach, according to the Babylonian names, Meshach, and Abednego. Come on. Amen. Amen. And these friends of Daniel, they stuck together because they realized that if they were in a situation where they were in bondage and captivity, they needed to rely on each other's strength in order to survive the bondage. Hallelujah. I'm here to declare.
saying to you today that you need somebody in your life who's going to take a stand for God in spite. 